Or somebody tell me how these things work. Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. This is the January 12th meeting of the Moscow Public Works and Finance Committee. I want to start off by once again saying thank you so much to our emergency services for the tragedy that we had on Saturday. Our fire, police, and emergency services, especially the ambulance service, performed exemplary. The partnership between the City of Moscow, Latok County, Idaho State Police, as well as the police agencies <coughs> on the other side of the state line in Washington, Whitman County Sheriff, Pullman Police Department, Washington State Police, everybody worked really well to capture the suspect. We will probably not get over this for a long time, and some folks will never get over it. This is a thing that just rocks a small community, but we will pull together. I thank you our I thank our mayor for the comments that he's made over the last few days publicly. Thank you to everybody that's moved forward with this. I'm going to start off with introductions. This is Walter Steed on my right. I'm Wayne Krause, Art Betke, and City Supervisor Gary Reedner. And the first item of business today will be the selection of our chair and our vice chair for this committee. Mark? I would like to move a slate of candidates forward with Wayne Krause as chair and Walter Steed as vice chair. You sure? Absolutely. Okay, then I'll go along. He's keeping a low profile yet. Uh, he's trying. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, that, then we have would, our, we have okay our slate then. Okay, thank you. Okay, next, uh, approval of the December 8th, 2014 minutes. Um, I was sitting on that and would suggest their approval. As would I. And then they are approved. Next, we have Don Palmer, and this is the approval of the December 8th, 2014 minutes. Go. No. Disbursement report for December 2014. <laughs> minutes are approved. <laughs> I've never done this before, so. You'll get better. All right, so this uh, report, this Christmas is the monthly report for December, as you had mentioned, 2014, and the last quarter, or first quarter of the new fiscal year. Um, the disbursements for the month of December uh, is $1,965,742.85. Um, and they're comprised of an array of, of categories that we typically break out. And um, their categories are, are this. Um, payroll is $835,989. Sanitation is $252,386. Professional services is $114,801. Now, of those professional services, a lot of that is the uh, JUB work for wastewater treatment plant phase five, some booster station work, um, things of that nature. Grants, $43,967, of which 30000 of that is re representative of the uh, um, um, smart transit, so uh, first quarter payment. The supplies, $72,330. Construction, $317,499, of which of that, 272000 is related to ball fields. Okay. Uh, vehicles, $15,111, which is representative of a, a Ford Fusion for a police vehicle. Um, utilities, $80,260. Equipment, $10,452. Improvements, $49,174. And insurance, $5,000 for a total of $1.8 million, which comprises 91% of the total expenses for the month. So if you have any Walter. questions. Um, under vehicles, you mentioned 15,111, and then you mentioned a Ford Fusion? Yes. Well, we get a wholesale rate, or is it used? It's a wholesale rate, but it's also included in a trade-in, so it's just oh, okay. it's the this book net. value. It's this a net, net value of okay. that expenditure. We got a 40, four, Real deal. little over four mm -hmm. grand in, in an in a exchange. So Mark? It's good by me. Okay. Okay, with that, I'll pass this around. Um I didn't assign yet the uh, chair co-chair, so you might write your chair co-chair beside it for me. 
You misspelled my name, Don, but we'll talk about that later. Hey, I'll, I'll How can you misspell get something? all over that. <laughs> It had occurred to me to tell Cassie that that uh, seat assignments had changed uh, today, and so it's been a busy day and made those last minute changes. So I apologize; she spelled her name wrong. I'm curious to see how she spelled it. <laughs> you miss Sue that much? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's been a very busy Don Palmer. So. Okay. Well, let's see. The next one is the uh, the first quarter 2015 financial report. Then, yeah. So this is the well, you kind of said the narrative already. The, the first quarter payment for the uh, um, fiscal year we're required to do uh, quarterly uh, financial statements. So they print in the newspaper. They're required <coughs> to be done by the ensuing month of the. Um, end of the quarter, so by the end of January, they need to be published in the newspaper. So, as such, we prepared it for today's meeting, and I'll go through that. Um, total uh, revenue and expenditures. Now, realize that we do have seasonality to uh, our government, in which case we receive our property taxes mostly in the end of January, 1st of February month, and then again, a large one at the end of July and August. So when I go through uh, the general fund revenues, that would be excluded from that. Also, in the water fund, we have seasonality there because most of our revenue, for almost 51% of it, is based on consumption, and so the water fund's revenues will not be at, at, uh, collected up to a point. But however, sewer is fairly uh, 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 even uh, pay stream, so we see that revenue fairly evenly. <laughs> so in the general fund, uh, revenues at 14%, as I had stated, $1.9 million in revenue is collected, and we have spent to date $2.8 million. Another reason why uh, we have a, a financial policy is to establish fund balance at a certain level so that we can get by the ebbs and tides of these revenue shortfalls. Okay, So... Um, so in a way, that represents 21%, which is uh, at a target of 25% into the first quarter, okay, uh, is usually what we shoot for. But uh, typically, uh, we don't see that in this fund. In the street fund, it's 11.78% collected. And we have not received uh, at this time, and as customarily so, the first quarter of the highway gas tax monies. And we did receive those in January, and there are about six thousand more than last year at this time frame. So a little, a little up on on uh, gas tax revenue, although it's not reflected here in this this report. The expenditures uh, to date in the street fund are four hundred and forty-eight thousand five hundred and seventy-six dollars, which is sixteen percent of the budget. And then parks and recreation is twenty point three percent and revenue collected and three hundred and fifty-three thousand or sixteen percent expended. The Moscow School District is 32823 which is comprised mostly of transfers into that fund. Uh, the expenses uh, are 32952 uh, 1912 center revenues are 29000 collected and 25245 expended, realizing, too, that those are transfers for um, general fund support. Uh, the Arts Fund, 57000 collected and 45000 expended. The, uh, and now you'd expect that to be uh, um, uh, at about 13% um, <coughs> spent to date. Transit Center revenues, uh, 4700 collected, 3600 expended. Water Fund revenues. Don, back sure. up just a second to Transit Center revenues. Uh, the space that CTAI rents. Yes. Um, how much is that? What's the percentage of that rental versus the rest of it? I'd have to get back with you on that. Okay. Yeah, I can get you those numbers. And I'm currently you. reviewing those contracts now, so I can let you know. Right. Do. Okay. Yeah. Um, water fund revenue is a million fifty-four thousand, twenty-one percent collected, and expenditures are a million ninety-nine thousand expended. Uh, sewer revenue is two point three million, and uh, which is thirty-two percent uh, collected. 
versus an expenditure of $1.9 million. The reason for that higher uh, revenue collection to date is the University of Idaho pays uh, quarterly. Um, it used to pay annually, and it would be higher than that. But we, they've, they've, uh, the revenue is 100% in this number, and then they, they pay over the next four quarters, which is something different than in the past. Okay, and we didn't do that until this year. Um, sanitation fund, 1.1 million revenue is 24% revenue and $858,000 expended. <coughs> Fleet fund, 383,000 in revenue, 159,000 expended and that, uh, 22%. That is relative, relative to, um, a monthly journal entry <coughs> to reflect the last five years averages of, of expenditures. So that is a uniform amount that all of the departments pay based on their fleet size. Um, information systems, 305000 versus 298000 fairly tight. And then we get into the miscellaneous funds, water construction, sewer construction, and sanitation, construction revenue. Those are all transfers from the operating funds into the expenditures, I mean into the, excuse me, into the uh, construction <coughs> funds uh, for future projects. Um, the capital projects fund is 56000 collected. That's grant-related revenue. Um, LID construction, $4,763. Hamilton Parks and Rec, 18000 which would be uh, interest income. And bond and interest debt service, $13,005, which is property tax money to so support this, the swimming pool. And then LID debt service fund, $14. Expenditures, water construction, sewer construction, uh, 35000 in water and 18000 in sewer. HUD, 3729 That's a transfer back into the street fund um, on a monthly basis. It's going to clean that 14910 completely out, and we will not have that fund in the 2016 fiscal year. Um, the capital projects fund, 168726 uh, mostly uh, street-related projects and some parks. Uh, the Hamilton Parks and Rec is the 280541 relative to the ball fields. And finally, the LID uh, debt service is 3750 is related to um, um, fiscal agent fees. <coughs> fiscal agent fees that we pay the banks. Any questions? Uh, the total of, of those uh, pretty much match at 8.6 versus 8.6 million, 14.5% um, revenue collected versus 14.36% expended for year to date. This uh, larger print version, um, I just went through the council version, which is the more detailed version. The larger print version su summarizes that, and that's what will be in the newspaper. Any questions? Uh, Don, you mentioned on the 1912 center that the revenues are transfers. Yes. Why would they not be equal to the same as the operations expenditure since we have a budget line to expend a certain amount per month toward the 1912 center? I believe that has to do with uh, the utilities and um, the janitorial type service. I think there's like two or three line well, items. Utilities that are, is a fixed amount. Okay, that, last contract, I'd have to go back and look correctly. and see because there's some there's some variance in that regard, and that'd be the only variance. The contractual amounts are exactly right. They're they're amounts set. Um, I, Gary, I think the last contract, Gary, we we set utilities at a fixed amount, if I remember. Yeah, they we <laughs> negotiate the amount, and then that is what we pay, regardless of what the amount of the utilities. Yeah, are. so it has to be one of those other line items that aren't are not part of the contract that we're responsible for. Take a look and let me know. Mike it's can do not that. much money; it's just a curiosity question. Yeah, it's just one of those things, but I'll find out and for you. Then, if I may, mm -hmm. uh, Wayne, one other question: <clears throat> you talked about why seasonality impacts this report but one seasonality that I don't think occurs that I thought would reflect in the report is with 25 percent of the budget year expended October November December yeah. none of the salaries reach 25 percent they're all anywhere from 15 percent up to 20.26 percent I would expect them to all be much closer to 25 percent we have 26 pay periods in the year. Okay, there you go. And so part of it could be that. We've also had a number of turnovers, um, and so that's part of that as well. Um, seasonal. But, and, and seasonal summer employees would push them all toward the, 
the full particularly in the streets and the parks department okay is a huge part of that those two seasonal numbers well it may be it may be the 26 payroll thing i guess that for some reason they're all every single department's lagging yeah that'd be primarily the reason <clears throat> okay thank you okay art i'm good with it all right. Explanations. With an acceptance of the report after council, I will submit this for uh, print. Thank you. Sounds good. Let's do it. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, sir. Next item is we will be having a public meeting. This has to do with the 1039 Alturas Drive Lot Division, and Becky Couch will be presenting that. Good afternoon. Hi, Becky. How are you doing? Good. All right. <coughs> so for your review today, we have a lot division request located at 1039 Alturas Drive. The subject property is located here on Alturas Drive outlined in red. To the west is um, South Blaine Street, and Alturas Drive connects up here to State Highway 8 to the northeast. Subject property is located within the multifamily residential R4 zoning district as well as adjacent properties with surrounding properties to the north being in the residential office district and to the south in the R2 and R3 uh, medium and moderate density residential zones. The minimum lot width, well, I'm sorry, the purpose of this lot division request is for twin home um, to be located on the parcel. The minimum lot width for twin home lots is 25 feet. The minimum lot area is 2,250 square feet. The proposed lot division is to divide the existing lot, which is 5,171 square feet, into two parcels of almost equal size, one at 2,582 square feet, and one at 2,589 square feet. Um, as I previously mentioned, the minimum lot width is 25 and the minimum lot area is 2,250. So as you can see, the proposal meets both of those requirements for the R4 zone. Per the Mo City of Moscow requirements for lot divisions, the property owners within 600 feet have been notified and the site was posted seven days prior to today's meeting. The staff's recommendation is to take public comment if applicable and recommend approval of the lot division request with no conditions suggested. Okay. Well, this is, is not a formal public hearing, but we will certainly entertain anybody that has any comments if they'd like to come forward and uh, state their name and their address. Let us know what's on your mind, uh, plus or minus on this. So. Could you point out uh, the adjacent lot? Because last time we were here, December sometime, we had another one. Which lot was the other most recent? The most recent one, I believe, is this one. Um, yeah, that's the one we, we split last time. Yep. Yeah, did we skip over one? Uh, the two adjacent lots are owned by different owners, and they're currently vacant. So this is the same owner as the okay. one you just heard. Okay, well, nobody's come forward for any comments. Excuse Palmer? me. I'm good. Art? Oh, Gary. If I may. have a comment? Uh, actually, no comment. Your name and your address, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just in light of the, of the uh, new makeup of the commission or committee, uh, this process is set up as an alternative for lot divisions. So public comment, the reason that we advertise it is so that you will open it up for public comment to take whatever's there. So it's run somewhat like a public hearing and then make a recommendation based upon that, which then will be taken to the city council. So I just wanted to reiterate that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So, you're, you're good. Art? I'm, I'm good. I'm good with this. I'd move we accept this with no conditions. This looks to me like it's uh, the same thing that Mr. Leppelman's been doing all along here. So uh, this, this committee is good for it. We'll move it forward to the consent agenda. So you're recommending uh, approval of the lot division with no conditions? With no conditions. Thank you. We'll put that on the consent agenda. Okay, we still have Becky. Thanks, Next Becky. one is a public meeting again, and this is on the 626 Kenneth Street lot division. <clears throat> okay, so once again, the review before you today is a lot division request at 626 Kenneth Street. 
The subject property is located here on the north side of Kinnis Street between South Logan Street and Lynn Avenue. The parcel is located within the um, medium density residential R3 zone as well as all surrounding adjacent properties. Properties to the east nearby are located within the um, moderate density residential R2 zone and to the west within the multifamily R4 zone. Within the R3 zone, the minimum lot width for single family and two family dwellings is 60 feet for those lots which are not provided rear access from an alley and that is the case with this lot. The minimum lot area for R3 parcels is 6,000 square feet for single family and 7,000 square feet for two family dwellings. Setbacks within the R3 is 15 feet or 20 feet for garages that face the front street for the front yard setback and for the side yards, five feet with the, the two sides totaling to a minimum of 15 feet and the <coughs> rear is a 20 foot setback. The existing parcel is 21,300 square feet and the owner is proposing to establish two parcels, one at 10,500 square feet with a minimum lot width of 50 feet, one at 12,600 square feet with a minimum lot width of 60 feet. The minimum lot area, as I mentioned, for parcels within R3 is 6,000 for single family or 7,000 for two families, so the newly created parcels would meet that requirement. The minimum lot width, as I mentioned, is um, 60 feet for lots which do not have alley access. However, as you may re recall, the owner received an uh, approval for a variance on February 18th, 2014 to allow for a reduction in the minimum lot width. And since the approval of the variance last February, the owner um, has continued to try to sell the parcel and has not had any luck. So therefore, she's taking action now to request the lot division with one resulting parcel being at a reduced lot width, the 50 feet, as is allowed by the previously approved variance. <coughs> there is an existing single family dwelling on the parcel. It's circled here in yellow and it will meet all required minimum setbacks for the lot. And again, per City of Moscow requirements for lot divisions, the property owners within 600 feet were notified um, and the site was posted seven days prior to the meeting. Staff's recommendation is to take public comment if applicable and recommend approval of the lot division request with no conditions suggested. Okay. Well, once again, this is a public meeting and so we will entertain any comments from folks out there that would like to um, speak for it or against it. And I just ask you to come forward and state your name and your address. And seeing nobody coming forward, we'll have a little discussion here. Walter? I have no problems with it. Well, given that we upheld the variance request, uh, this seems to be the legal punctuation on the end of the process, and I have no problems either. Well, I think it looks like the logical way to go, considering the property hasn't sold. Uh, it's by right should be able to do this. It meets the frontage requirements, and so this committee will recommend approval with no additional conditions, and we can go ahead and put that, I think, on the consent agenda also. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. Thank you, Becky. Okay, the next item is a city entryway beautification project. It's a final report and some recommendations. Bill Belknap will be presenting that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Bill. Well, I think I've been reminded at least three times that there's a football game on apparently <laughs> this evening. What, what game would that be? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to run through this fairly quickly. Uh, we'll be before the full. Oh, Don's leaving. <laughs> Go ahead, get a get a head start. Well, Don's got a little bit of commute. Um, so I'll run through this actually fairly quickly tonight, um, and then we'll have more time to go through the full through the, during the full council. A consideration on Tuesday of next week. Uh, so just a little bit of background as the committee is aware the appearances of the city's entryways have been an area of concern for many years. Uh, the council established a goal in 2013 to develop improvement plans for the beautification of public right-of-way at city entrances by 2014. Um, 
we discussed during the formation of the scope of the project that we were going to look both at the entryways as well as the continuation of the roadway corridors into the downtown area. And ultimately, the project's intent was to uh, examine opportunities to improve the appearance of the community uh, and, and other actions we could take to positively impact the community's appearance and character. Um, as we discussed, the project was outlined in two different phases. Phase one uh, was an evaluation of the corridors and identification for improvements that could occur that would improve the appearance of the community. We looked at multiple uh, elements within those areas, both looking at hardscape, softscape improvements, visitor wayfinding and resources, public art installations, as well as other corridor enhancements. And phase two of the project uh, reviewed concept designs for identified locations and cost estimate development. Uh, that is so we were going to develop preliminary designs and cost estimates. Uh, as a reminder, there is no funding that has been identified for construction of the improvements to date. The goal was to develop the plans for the council's consideration and for consideration of funding and future construction. Um, so as we looked at the project in fiscals 13 and 14, the council budgeted $35,000 for professional services. Uh, staff developed a, a project scope and approach that was presented in March of 2013. Uh, at that point in time, the council authorized up to $10,000 of funding for phase one and up to $25,000 for phase two. Uh, we went through the RFQ process in August of 13. We selected a design professional to assist us as landscape architect design. And we formed a steering committee to help guide and direct the project and held eight meetings over the course of the project, as well as two open house meetings, one that was held in September 18th of uh, 13 and one that was held in May 29th of 14. Uh, the steering committee was a great uh, help in the project. The membership included Walter Steed, Melanie Zimmer, Michelle Fusen, Ken Helm, uh, Josh Larson, and Gina Trucio from the chamber, Iris Mays from the Arts Commission, Jim Miller, Ray Pankoff, uh, and Nels Reese. The steering committee's roles were to provide guidance and oversight, uh, represent the community and project stakeholders and service as ambassadors on the project, and ultimately provide recommendations to the council, which is coming forward at this point. Um, we did a number of exercises with the steering committee and asked them to look at the community with new eyes, uh, look at these corridors, uh, record their impressions, identify areas that they liked or areas that they felt could be improved, and where key focal projects could be focused. Um, so we, a number, all the steering committee members, we were given map sheets of all the corridors reaching from the entryways to the kind of downtown core. This is actually the south lane out kind of east-west here. So this is the south in the community, the grain bins, and this is at the south couplet. So we had these maps uh, of each of the four corridors, uh, west, north, uh, east, and south, and asked them to drive the corridors and identify things that they felt were assets, things that they felt um, could uh, were opportunities, uh, and other uh, things of note through the corridors. And we took all the input of the steering committee and we entered it into a, a Google map to really begin to gel together all of the input that we received from the steering committee um, and then move that into a open house meeting. This was the one that was held in September where we shared the uh, intent of the project and we had maps where uh, participants could place dots on areas that they felt were the highest priority locations or to identify locations they liked and also to share some different treatments and beautification uh, treatments that could be implemented in the project. Uh, from that we developed a initial potential project list and a general description. Uh, looked at relative cost and magnitude and helped hone in on the eight sites that were ultimately identified by the steering committee that really included two on each of the corridors, one near the what you would feel like is kind of the city entryway out near the city limits and one at each of the transition points between those corridors and the <coughs> downtown area. Um, from that, we made the report on phase one and council authorized uh, us to move forward into phase two of the project, which was the development of the concept designs for those eight identified locations. I'm gonna flip through those kind of quickly. This is one on the west side at War Bonnet um, and State Highway 8. Uh, again, on the west corridor then here at Llewellyn 3rd and the Pullman Road intersection. Um, the next site moving north was the north entry. This is Pintail down to Rodeo. Um, there at the north entry into um, town. And then moving a little bit farther south on the north, this is the north couplet, couplet at the sea and uh, main intersections and the north couplet in general vicinity. Um, this on the east was the Mountain View and Highway 8 intersection on the east corridor. And then the Steiner White and Highway 8 east intersection here uh, also on that east corridor. 
And then coming from the south, uh, the identified areas beginning at the bridge crossing of the South Fork of the Palouse River and working our way up to the Palouse River Drive intersection. Um, and then the last was here at the South Couplet uh, intersection with US 95 and Highway 8. Uh, so there are a number of recommendations I won't read through uh, in the interest of time uh, this afternoon, uh, but there are a number of objectives that were identified and recommended by the committee. Um, number three dealt with the specific targeted landscape improvements for those eight sites. Uh, public art was a consideration through all of the process. Um, and number five was to support the university's efforts and its gateway improvements as long as its other improvements along the south side of the Pullman Roadway between Perimeter Drive and Line Street. And number six was to partner with the Idaho Transportation Department with the Thorn Creek Project in uh, visualizing and focusing on improvements that could occur uh, within the that improvement project uh, when that is constructed. As we looked at the eight individual sites, the, the steering committee recommended uh, this as the following ranking for <coughs> prioritization of the projects with the north entry enhancement being number one, uh, the north couplet being number two, um, both because it uh, was a good candidate location but also tied with the council's additional goal of expanding the perception of the Main Street downtown area north on Main uh, up to C Street. Um, and then focusing then on the south entry at the bridge to the Palouse River Drive, uh, and then the south couplet is number four, then moving out to the west corridor at Hadley Way, then to the east corridor at Mountain View. Uh, Steiner and White then was the seventh on the east <coughs> corridor. And then Llewellyn and third was ranked as the lowest priority because of the conversation that has been occurring recently about a possible intersection rearrangement. So there was concern about uh, making any type of investment improvements there until we really understand what the future of that intersection was going to look like. Um, the steering committee recognized and as part of the process there are detailed cost estimates that have been prepared for each of the improvements and they are not uh, inexpensive. Uh, the least expensive was about 80000 and I think the most expensive was near $400,000 for uh, installation. And so the committee did recognize that a lot of these improvements had a fairly large budget and uh, likely exceeded the financial resources the city might have available. Um, the, the steering committee uh, did make a recommendation that we consider a self-performance model where we would hire our own crews to do landscape installations. There were a lot of activities and a lot of things that were identified by the steering committee related to um, weed and vegetation growth. That, that was there because they're, they're you know, looking at trying to enhance, expand, and increase the amount of vegetation management that we did on the roadway. A lot of times it's just the roadway edge, both on public and private property, that we have a fair amount of grass and weed growth during the summer season. Um, so a lot of those activities could be performed with our own crews and staff if we could expand upon our, our capacity with adding seasonal part-time staff individuals that could handle that. Um, much of the other work focused on, on tree installation as well as some landscape installation and those are also items that we could self-perform and we could um, do bulk plant purchase and do installations over the, over the summer season. Um, and so the steering committee felt that was a way that we could begin making efforts at a lower cost than the, you know, obviously hundreds of thousands of dollars of doing the design bid uh, and build model for the other installations. Uh, the steering committee did feel, though, that the north entry way was a priority. Um, it was also the lowest cost of the, all of the project sites that were identified. And so the committee did recommend that the city um, prioritize that or escalate the installation of that and actually do that as a design bid build project where that could be done quickly and it needs a little bit more careful attention due to the grades and slopes in that area but also then to move in, in a self-performance model on the other remaining essentially six sites if you're going to defer the Llewellyn and Third Street intersection. <coughs> uh, so there is a, a breakout of a potential uh, budget or what it would cost for that self-performance model between labor and materials, and it begins at, uh, I think, $57,000 annually. Um, and within three years' time, it is estimated that all of the plant materials and street trees could be installed uh, with the crews, I think, focusing on essentially two sites per summer, as well as the other maintenance activities, weed management um, and other uh, corridor maintenance activities. And so then at year four, uh, you would just be in a, in a maintenance mode at that point in time where, you know, these, these will, uh, installations and trees and landscape will require 
uh, continuous care and whether that's <coughs> this is um, budgeted at retaining the two seasonal six month staff members to do that maintenance the weed weed management the uh, replacing plants you have mortality or trees you you know that die during the course of the time period uh, but overall just providing a higher level of care to the corridors and to landscape installations throughout the corridor so um, the installation of the north entry project um, the original estimate was 80,000 for that project 80,000 for the base project uh, steering committee did explore some options where it could possibly be reduced in scope a little bit to bring it down to uh, something closer to 50,000 for that initial installation and then the remaining uh, individual projects would be done on a self-performance uh, basis as I mentioned, so we'll just give a recap on the project expenses to date. As I mentioned before, the council authorized a total of 35,000 or budgeted a total of 35,000 for this project, up to 10,000 uh, for phase one and up to 25,000 for phase two. The actual expenses that we've incurred to date included a little over $2,000 for phase one and 12,000 for phase two. So we've expended about $14,000 over the course of the, the last year on the project. So with that, uh, that's a quick recap, and if there's, uh, I can, I will give a more uh, detailed and slower paced presentation on Tuesday, um, but I'd be happy to try to answer any questions you have at this point in time. Well, Walter, thank you for chairing that committee, and having been the chair, I'd look to you for some comments. Thank you. Um, excellent job, Bill. Um, what, what can you fill in? Anything? Well, I'm going to emphasize a few things. Um, there was a mention about the South uh, couplet and working with ITD. And um, as part of that steering committee work, um, it, it was pointed out that we have three entryway signs in Moscow, north, east, and west. But they never built the south one because they didn't know where the road from Thorn Creek was going to come to town. So I've already attempted to plant in ITD's mind that if they ever bid and build a project coming in from Thorn Creek, that they include a similar uh, sign to what we have on the other three entrances in their budget and let the ITD project pay for it. But that's just a minor thing. Um, Bill pointed out that we saved $21,000 in the design uh, work that was done in terms of the uh, council authorized funds for the, the work to this point. Um, those funds, as I understand it, if I remember correctly, um, have been captured in capital projects when the last fiscal year expired. But uh, so I would like to see the council uh, pick those funds back up in the next budget process minimally to put in the construction side of this. And then the, uh, the action that's called for on our agenda today is receive the report and provide direction. I would like to send this to council with a uh, action item that staff be directed to pursue the uh, funding method that, that Bill has already brought out to get this thing built over a five to seven year period. Um, on page 34 uh, in the report, it has a, a sentence that says the steering committee recommends the city prioritize the north entry enhancements and pursue this improvement immediately through a design bid build model. I would like to suggest to this group that the council uh, uh, action at the next council meeting be to do exactly that. And then furthermore, um, Bill put the table up there for a five-year uh, funding plan that staff be directed to uh, make every consideration to make that part of the budget process uh, that will be starting sooner than staff would like to see it start probably, but soon. Um, so I would just like to, to keep, you know, the emphasis on this and to move it forward. Gary, do you see any issue with the, with the, some of the desires that, that Walter has put forward? I don't think there's a thing wrong with uh, the council uh, giving the direction that they like where it's going, bring a uh, proposal forward in the budget process. I don't know what else, Walter, I, I maybe missed something. Was there some other action you were requesting? Be no, done? that would be, su be sufficient. Um, but for the council to make direct comment to staff that 
the council would like to see this done if that were the vote. Well, I um, think that, to me, that would be the direction it's going to go, and I'll actually look for you at the council meeting Tuesday to go yeah. ahead and make those comments. As, as Bill indicated, the, the, the landscape architect consultant's cost estimate to do the proposed work do you remember the total? It's, it was a number that was so far over my head, I don't remember it, but it was... I want to say it's that $1.8 million and for all, everything. to all yeah. eight sites. I didn't add it up, but I had my mind $2 million, so... Yeah. yeah, it was a choke number. I mean, you just like, whoa. And, and, and I'll give Bill credit. Bill has come up with, with the program that's on page 35 of the report that talks about a way to get this done. Um, I was very pleased with our using... Uh, red shirt um, uh, prison labor to cut the weeds on the entrances to the city uh, at the beginning of last summer. It, it it made a lot of difference in what the town looked like driving into it, just with the weeds. But when, as Bill said, when the steering committee was asked to go out and drive into town with fresh eyes, every single comment started with weeds, weeds, weeds. And so I believe that 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 needs to continue, whether it's with red shirts or through the program that, that Bill is proposing with additional seasonal labor. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if, if the city wishes to put that seasonal labor on as early as those weeds might be cut at a time when the rain has stopped, and once cut, they stay down and don't come back. So that would be a timing issue for staff to work out. But um, I was very pleased with that. Um, we were probably a half a day short in having enough labor to get all four entrances looking really good. South, east, and west looked really good. North had a little bit of a look of ran out of time, but uh, it showed that it, it could could work and, 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 and would make a big difference in what the community looks like. Um, Gina uh, Tarusio sat on the steering committee representing the, the chamber. Um, a big push, and, and she's certainly welcome to come in if she wishes, you know, by the chamber and by their tourist uh, group, subgroup, is to enhance the entrances of Moscow for the purposes of uh, assisting the U of I with their efforts to uh, increase the enrollment so that these parents out of south and southeast Idaho who have only heard of Moscow and probably not very good things about that, if they drive a, a kid up here to come to Vandal Friday, um, they're not depressed, rather they're impressed by what Moscow looks like as they come into the campus. You know, you know, you have comments you'd like to make? Come on up. University spending money to help their entrances, and, and this will be part of it. Again, Gina, thank you for your participation on that. Before you start, Art has a comment he'd like yeah, to make. I was just going to say that I think the whole project is a very good thing to be doing. You only get one chance to make a good impression, and our city entrances are it. And given that some of this is going to have to wait until we get through the next budget cycle and get it introduced to the budget, I was going to reinforce what Walter said, is that it doesn't take a whole lot to chase after those weeds that are at the entrances. The weeds, the grass growing through cracks in sidewalks and along the curbs and things like that. And if we can just get ahead of that issue, it would be sort of like a, a small band-aid on a gaping wound, if you will, but it would help. Mm -hmm. And I think we really need to proceed with that. And then also, as Walter suggested, get this worked into the budget in a style that we can accommodate without hindering the rest of the city's operation and definitely get this going because it's, uh, it's something important, I think, that the city needs to have. We look okay once we get to the middle of town, but on each of the entrances, not so great. Gina, I Thank you. Uh, good evening, all of you. I would very much and very enthusiastically echo Walter's thoughts about that very first impression. Any way you're coming into town, it would be great to have a very good first impression given. I think, too, to build on what you say, uh, Mr. Betke, that basically a little bit of improvement can spread throughout our entire community. So maybe some of those grass growing up in the sidewalk cracks and that sort of thing could actually uh, start to disappear as well. You know, so I'm, I'm um, energetic and enthusiastic, and I, as long as I don't have to work with the red-shirted prison team, I would love to help plant some plants. So if you need one more really good helper, I'd love to do that. So. Wayne, if I might. Sure. Personally, Gina, I would look to the chamber 
for leadership in terms of the private properties that uh, have issues. Yes, um, sir. It, it, there are some. We, we, we've identified them. Uh, we know where they are. I'm not suggesting that the city take on private property maintenance, weed cutting or whatever. Um, but I do believe that if we get the parts done that belong to us or belong to the state rights of way or whatever those things are, that, you know, a freshly painted house in a neighborhood encourages other people to think about buying a little paint. So that kind of thing and with, with the chamber's support and encouragement to private property owners just kind of bring the whole thing up a little bit. Right. It does. Yeah. In this $2 million that we're going to need, it would be great if the good ferry would drop $2 million in our lap so we could just jump on this and get it done. That being obviously not going to be the case. Is there any grant money out there that's, that's available for something like this, that's something we could look into? The only money that I'm aware of are CDBG-type grants, downtown-type grants. Uh, doesn't mean there might be some opportunities with ITD or some, uh, I'm un unaware of any city beautification grants at this time. But we can certainly bring that up to Elisa and have her take a look. She keeps her eyes on things like that. Uh, if I could just make a comment, I, I like the excitement about where it's going. I would, I always caution the council when you're looking at a $60,000 budget item mid-year, we're just barely into the new budget, it's easy to get excited and say this is what we want to have done. So I would recommend that the council, if the council's action is to move ahead, which makes sense, to develop it. There are labor things that need to be dealt with here. <coughs> Parks and Rec's the one going to be doing the labor on the issue. Uh, it takes a little more planning. But um, I think the direction to bring a proposal together to council that does what is contemplated in the plan, I think, is a, is a great way to start. And then it, the council can weigh it against the priorities that it has at that time. And thank you for that. I think that you bring some good points to it. <clears throat> I also I know that this committee is going to move this forward to the council with uh, certainly a recommendation <laughs> to proceed uh, with Walter's additional comments to it. Um, and that being said, I think you're going to find that the council as a whole is going to be very enthusiastic about this and want to move forward expeditiously as we can. So the action plan would be, let's see what staff can put together and what we can get done this spring and this summer, this year. We'll have to look down. at the resources that are in the budget at this well, time. You know Trying what? We, 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 down we, and that Walter and I were visiting today, and I made the comment that, you know, over the years I've noticed we do a lot of talk and not quite as much walk, and we all know that I prefer to do a lot of walking. So thank you for your comments. Anything else, Art? Nope. Great. Yep. Gina, thank you. Bill, good presentation. And... Um, We'll move this on to the regular council agenda so we can have some additional we'll comments. Thank you, Jenna. Thanks, Bill. Next, we have a report, and then we'll be done, and that's on the cable audit <coughs> results. I know that Walter had had some questions on that previously. We actually had a, uh, some conversation with another entity about looking at that. Uh, a, Don, a, a, vendor, a vendor wanting to help us out. It looks like we'd already, out we'd already been there. X amount of dollars. Yeah. We started a project a couple years ago. And um, uh, originally, uh, Pullman had a uh, contractor, the uh, company out of Florida, to look at an audit. And then it, it uh, what happened was Time Warner had sit, volunteered without, I had actually taken it to council, got permission to go up and move forward. And then the following meeting, uh, they got wind of that and said, you know what, we can provide the audit and use the same guidelines. So we we allowed that to happen took a lot longer than we ever anticipated and finished that up this last uh, December wasn't it or yes. and so um, what we got out of that and then I what I had asked for was to review their their work and so I had done that and the amount of monies that we had received was similar to what we, Pullman had gotten and we the amount of money was thirty five thousand five three hundred and forty six dollars Don, what just a smidgen of detail. Where, what did what did they find, and where did they find it? This, um, was a, this was a vendor that went through billing records or payment. Rep what did they go through, and then what 
types of things did they find that got us a check? Typically what happens is as the city grows or as annexations occur, the the boundaries grow, but then they're, they're behind in, in capturing. They send the monies off to the county or, or, or don't even submit them if the county doesn't have a franchise fee. So a lot of times they'll look at the property records and see, oh, these properties are actually in the city limits, and you should have got the money, not someone else, or, or if the county doesn't have a, a I don't believe they do, um, a franchise agreement with Time Warner, then the money should have belonged to the city of Moscow. That's what this instance was. And with that comes advertising dollars uh, that is remitted back because it's a percentage of revenue total. So that, that that's the kind of information that, that they went through and found. So Time Warner was billing customers, which because of our agreement with Time Warner, Time Warner owed us some percentage or dollar amount of each of those customers' remittances to them. And this audit found there were customers out there paying Time Warner, but Time Warner was not passing through our part. Within our city boundaries that had been, okay. um, these changes of boundaries didn't, okay. didn't take effect on their records. It also has to do with level of service. As people change their cable services, as Don indicated, it's typically a percentage of revenues generated within the city limits. So where the city limit falls is a big piece of that. There are also levels of service under the Cable Act. So all of those things together, every now and then it just makes sense to check. You'll see the uh, um, Avista will do that every now and then. Uh, any franchise utilities typically have some sort of ability to come in and audit them to make sure that it's being done correctly. And, we had, may, and, and, and in this case, we hired a vendor who searched the records, and they kept a percentage as their fee, and the 35000 is net to us? No, actually not. Um, we, the vendors typically uh, charge 50%. Okay. And we were about to go down that path when Avesta said that we will, Time Warner. or excuse me, Time Warner had said that they will do their self audit. We agreed to that as long as we had access to those records. It took a long time to go through the accessing part of those records, but we finally got those, and um, I verified the the amounts with them. Otherwise, we would have had to have a seventy over a seventy thousand dollar rate adjustment to receive 50% of what we did get. So I'm pretty pleased with the fact that we did get um, the revenues that we got. So, And it's in line with what uh, um, what uh, Pullman. Pullman got. So, mm -hmm. so did does you, this did you, I'm sorry. Did you say that the county did not have a site, the same type of agreement? No, I don't know that they do. I don't know. They might, if they do, then what would have happened, they would have um, deducted their amounts, remissions to them to make it more equitable to us. Did so I don't know. I, have, yeah, okay. so I would that, note that the Time Warner Cable is no longer under the city franchise. Yeah, right. uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the state passed a legislation that um, the at the behest of the franchisee could elect to go under an omnibus state franchise. Uh, Time Warner elected to do that. So the franchise they have here, if they have other franchises around the state, then they can use that same franchise. It just makes it more standardized for them. The good thing is the franchise fee remains the same. We lost some local control, but uh, it's up to the discretion of the franchisee. So, um, and this was all pre-state franchise uh, audit. Correct. So this was pretty much a one-off addition to the budget and in the future this will just provide the snapshot that they use for a while until they go back and look again exactly. and then it goes into the state pot and we get divvied out correct and this was part of a series of audits that we had done just two years prior to that so about four years ago we had hired a, a consulting company to go back and look at our electrical um, uh, charges and went through that process as well. And what's funny about that is we said, well, we think we did a pretty good job already. And they said, well, we guarantee you that we will find money. So they did, and it was like 150 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> they spent a lot more 50, money than that. They got 50% of. Yeah. of that. <laughs> so how often do we do this on it? Um, this is pretty unusual. Um, we've not done one of these in the past, and I um, – had heard a few agencies around, um, the only second one in Idaho, uh, I think 
I'm trying to remember who did the other audit, whether it was Twin Falls or Idaho Falls, but one one of those other cities had done one as well, and uh, about the same time frame that I was pursuing one. So um, I came across it at one of the national conferences I was at a few years ago, and it was coincidental because uh, Bill Mulholland over at Pullman, um, the he just got um, after um, being approached at GFOA, they researched myself and Bill at the same time wanted to do both cities at the same time, and they so, didn't get that. They just got bills. How how far back do they look? How many years do they go back? Um, they went back five years. Yeah, just to the point when Time Warner Cable took over from. Oh, okay the last cable right. franchisee from the previous one. So they're only responsible for what they, since they came on. If they if they had been a provider for 20 years, they would have gone back to look 20 years. Yeah, statute of limitation probably? Yeah, uh, typically you negotiate that. Yeah, okay. But okay. I would suspect five years is about normal. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Three. I think we lost Money. Walter. You got a phone call. I wonder who's winning, Oregon or? Yeah. Uh, seeing as there is no more business to come before this committee, we stand adjourned. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. You, sir. Thank you very much.